Have you ever unfollowed or unfriended someone on social media because you strongly disagreed with their views? Or not wanted to read a certain article or publication because you didn't agree with their stand on things? And once you remove that person or article from your feed by unfollowing them, how did you feel? Did you feel content that you didn't have to see their posts anymore? Congratulations, you have just created your very own echo chamber on your social media feed. When we exclude people from our feeds we don't agree with, we surround ourselves by an echo chamber. Now we only see like-minded friends who think exactly like us and will echo what we think. We all have a natural tendency to surround ourselves with people who agree with us. Disagreement and conflict are uncomfortable, and so naturally we tend to avoid them by sticking with people who think like us. And now that we are in this echo chamber, where we only see and hear the opinions of people who think like us, it reinforces our own line of thinking. It makes us feel like our opinion is the only valid opinion, because it is never truly being challenged. In other words, we're in a state of intellectual isolation. That is the definition of an echo chamber, an environment where a person only encounters information or opinions that reflect and reinforce their own. Beliefs are amplified or reinforced by communication and repetition inside a closed system and insulates them from rebuttal. But wait, there's more. Are you the only one who controls what happens on your social media feed? If you scroll through Instagram or TikTok right now, what do you see? You see certain posts from friends, maybe some ads, maybe some posts from people you don't even know. But there are millions of posts uploaded to these platforms every day. So who decides which ones appear on your feed? Who decides which one of these posts will appear first so that you will almost certainly see them? And which posts appear at the bottom of the list where you'll probably never see them? All social media giants, including Google, Facebook and Twitter, use some very complex algorithms to decide what content to offer us. These platforms make money off ads that we see while we're using them. So they have an incentive to keep us on the platform as long as possible, to show us as many ads as they can. And the best way to keep us on the platform is to show us content that we're likely to enjoy and want to see. When you open Netflix, it will suggest movies based on what you've watched previously because it's trying to suggest films that you will like. It's the same with social media. YouTube will make suggestions based on what the robot thinks you will like, based on what other content you have consumed on the platform. What you have clicked on, what you have commented on, how long you have looked at a post or a video for. When you are searching for information on Google, once again the search results will not be the same depending on your past search history, your location, your past click behaviour. Google's algorithm will place at the top the information that it thinks you will find the most relevant, what it thinks you want to hear. In the end, because of the algorithm, your feed will only ever show you what you want to see and things you are likely to agree with. This is what we call a filter bubble. The algorithm filters out information that we may not like or agree with. Of course, as we said earlier, we naturally have a tendency to surround ourselves with people who agree with us and literature we agree with. But here's the thing, until now, people have always tended to choose what newspaper or magazine they read based on their own opinions. We know what we are choosing to consume and on what criteria we choose to consume it, but with filter bubbles the choice is made for us automatically without giving us the chance to even know what other options are out there. If social media algorithms choose what to show us or not to show us, how do we know what piece of information we're missing out on? Social media algorithms will block out posts with opinions you may not agree with, but also information about stuff you aren't particularly following. For instance, it may not show you updates about animal rights simply because you've never really shown an interest before. We become surrounded by only one perspective or point of view. 
We don't need to fear social media. Facebook and Twitter aren't actively trying to manipulate us. We just need to be aware that their algorithm has a tendency to always show us the same kind of results. That's why it's always best to check multiple sources of information, regularly interact with people who have different views than ours, think critically about what we see, and always check the supporting facts and evidence.